fight and talk. Fuck them. Into the I'm delighted to see I'm joined by Bellator Light Heavyweight, Luke Trainer. Luke, it's not for a fight this time. It's normally for a fight coming up. It's something a bit different. You and Paradigm yes, Sports Luke Knight are doing a 100 mile cycle for charity. Can you tell us mm-hmm. little, how that came about? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, uh, like you said, me and Luke Knight, um, we are going to be cycling on the 21st of December. We're going to be doing 100 miles for a charity called Safer Places. It actually came about, Luke messaged me. Um, I ran a little fundraiser for my local hospital in my town. And um, I got some toys together for the lovely people of Instagram. And uh, he messaged me after that saying he was inspired by it and wanted to do something himself. Um, it was his idea to ride 100 miles uh, where neither of us have rid a bike in about 10 years. So uh, I don't really know how that idea come about for him, but he said he'd like to do it with me. And um, and we're gonna, just going to try and raise as much money as possible for safer places. Can you tell us a little bit, maybe for people who don't know about Safer Places as a charity, the sort of work that they do and ultimately why they were the chosen charity for this event? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so Safer Places is a women's refuge. Um, they're local in Hertfordshire. The one I work with is in Stevenage, which is my hometown. And um, they're, they're basically a women's refuge where women and children have managed to escape from their domestic abusers and, uh, and they seek refuge in, uh, in, this, in this place, basically. It's, it's kind of like a safe house for, for the women and children who have, who have been victims of domestic abuse. They provide things such as, uh, obviously, a shelter, you know, a safe place to sleep at night, food, water, all of the necessities. But then on the flip side of that, they also provide education, they, uh, they provide therapy for the women and for the children. And their role there is to not only keep them safe and to, and to give them a middle ground where they can find a new place to live, but also to help rebuild their lives after going through such a traumatic thing. So they're a truly spectacular charity. I've, I've worked with Michelle before, uh, again, doing some toy donations. And, um, and I'm going to work with her again in the future. And she runs the one in Stevenage and she is an angel from heaven. She is, uh, she's incredible. When I speak to her about how hard she works, it, it inspires me. So, um, she has me, no, <laughs> that's all right. No, no, no drama. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's inspiring. So, um, the charity is awesome. It's called Safer Places. They're in Hertfordshire. The one I'm looking to donate to specifically is the one in Stevenage, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, they're full of beautiful people, man. So if, if, if we can help out in any way, then, um, it's going to be an incredible thing. I can't, I can't wait to see what the number goes up to. The goal is a thousand. We're already at, I think we might be at 500 now. Um, the last time I checked this morning, we was at 470. So there's been a bunch of people. It's only been up for about four days and uh, we've already, you know, already halfway. So if we could get to a thousand, I would be so grateful. And I know safer places would be too, but listen, any little helps and the money is going to such great causes. It, if I gave them a five, I'd be happy. Obviously the more, the better, but yeah so what's it been like for you like how nice has it been for you to see such a initial response the second you put it out you're already halfway towards your target oh man is is humbling i i actually got a donation today uh from from a friend uh his, his name is harry he probably won't like me putting blasting his name out like that he actually asked me not to but i don't care uh his name is harry uh we've never met we've never met uh he's got he's got a dope podcast that i'm gonna be on later this week um and he reached out to me after the milan fight and said ask me if i could jump on a podcast i said yeah sure no worries once i've got once i've got some free time once everything kind of dies down a little bit um and we've got another fight i'll jump on no stress he goes sweet bro no worries and that was it that was our only communication then this morning, I come out of the gym and I get a message from Luke saying, yo, check the donations. Your friend Harry's just donated £100. And I was like, wait, what? My friend Harry? Thinking I couldn't rack my brain to see who that was. And then I checked and it was him. So I give him a call right after and it, I'm blown away. And whether it's £100, like what he gave, or whether it's a few of my friends who I put up a story this morning and they all donated like six quid each, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just... It's just a beautiful thing to see everyone else wanting to help at a time where, you know, with Corona, it's, it's a struggle for everyone and not just financially, but also mentally. And some people just aren't in the mood to, to want to do anything. So the fact that they want to help out 
um, and just give some money to a charity that they don't even know about. It's uh, it's a beautiful thing, man. It shows the nature of of the people, and um, yeah, it's lovely. It, it just it just gives me a good feeling. If people are wanting to get involved, if people are wanting to donate, how is best to do that? So the the GoFundMe link is on my bio um, and also on Luke's on Luke Knight's bio, and I believe. Luke Knight's, oh, I'm going to mess this up. His Instagram handle, if you type in Luke Knight with a silent K, you'll find him. Um, he's a beautiful chap with a very thick beard. Um, but it's in my bio uh, and my Instagram handle is Luke DeGent. So that might be an easier way to find it. But um, but yeah, click the link. Uh, the minimum amount you can, you can donate is five pound and that would go a long way. So um, if you're feeling froggy, please jump onto the donation and, uh, and yeah, get some money in, please. I was just checking there because I know Luke will kill us if we don't get this book right. Yeah, it's Luke Knight, <laughs> 93, Silent K. Okay. Uh, uh, there, there you go. go. We'll also pop, <laughs> Thank you. We'll pop the link as well in the top line of the description. So if you're watching this and you do want to get involved, go to that GoFundMe link at the top of the description and it'll take you to that page. So yeah. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. You mentioned there people struggling this year. It's been a tough year for everyone, but mm-hmm. I know your whole mantra, you're very positive and it's, why is it, I guess, so important for you to share the love, spread the love the way that you do, especially for people in times like this? Um, I'll be honest with you, it's um, the last the last six to seven, ten years, um, I've just kind of had a different perspective on life. Um, my little sisters are actually sitting in the room now, so um, I'm going to feel funky about it, but... Uh, ever since ever since we ever since we started fostering um it's kind of changed my outlook on life a lot and um and it's just made me feel a lot better about life in general so um i feel like i feel like now um now i, I you know i have everything i want in life i am uh i'm a very rich man i don't i don't mean financially i just mean there's there's nothing in life that that i um that I'm sad about, if I'm honest, and and that sounds weird, but I have everything, you know. I've um I've lost family members recently, and um and even with that, I still find beauty in the fact that yo, like they had they had a fantastic life, and I've almost lost family members that I spoke to about before. I spoke to you about before. <laughs> I can speak about it again. So I'm <laughs> feeling to cry right now. It's a Monday, um, but my outlook on life has, has changed. I would say the most dramatically through fostering and, and not enough people know that feeling, you know, not enough people, um, have the, have the opportunity, have the blessing to, um, to be surrounded by such beautiful children, (laughs) um, who, uh, who, who, who have shaped my life so much. So, um, I guess, I kind of look at it as a purpose. I have a purpose in life that's way higher than MMA. MMA is very cool and it's a it's a dope sport. I love it. It's a passion of mine and I'll do it until I can't do it anymore. But my purpose in life is not MMA. My purpose in life is to help others. Um, and I've had positive feedback. When I do spread a kind of good energy, um, I've had people who have, who have hit me up and said that it's helped. And listen, if I help one person um, in my entire life and annoy a million, then... I'm taking that over over the a million. So, um, so yeah, I just feel like it's everyone else's responsibility to help everyone else. If if and if we all had that same sort of vibe, then the world would be a better place. So, I guess that's I guess that's where it's come from. If I'm honest, with that, there, there is a lot of people struggling this year. You mentioned it before yourself there as well. Have you got I guess any tips or any advice for people who are maybe struggling to try and change their outlook? Well, like you said that yours changed all of years ago. Um. Yeah, it might sound corny. Um, first and foremost, I'd say get out of the house if you can, um, unless you absolutely have to stay locked in, locked in, then um, then do that. And that doesn't mean I'm saying get to the white line and go have a few bevs with, with the boys. I'm saying, you know, get outside. If you're lucky enough to have a dog, then go spend some time with your dog at the local park. Um, you know, you don't need to do anything crazy. Just get out, get some fresh air first and foremost. And then and following that, I would say get some exercise in your life and try and clean up your diet. That is, again, I don't know if these are the tips you're looking for, but for me, this is massive. You know, I, I mean, me being an athlete, I train two to three times every day. I'm not saying do that. I'm saying if you can get four sessions in a week, whether you're at the gym, whether you're going for a run, whether you're going to the park, whatever, if you can do that and clean up your diet, get some more greens in you and eat some healthy foods and kind of cut out the sugar, that will change masses. And then following that, if you really want to 
if you really want to be walking with God, then just go help some people and, uh, and see, see your outlook. Go help some people who have it worse than you and go see your outlook on life. And if it doesn't change, then I don't know. I don't know what to say to you, but um, that's what I would say. I would say, look after yourself first and foremost and make sure your health is on point. And then after that, you know, spread, spread some love, you know, spend some time helping others. And I guarantee you'll be a happier human being. So, um, yeah, that's what I try and recommend to everyone around me. And, uh, sometimes they say, shut up. And sometimes they say, thanks. And I'll take the thanks over to shut up. So, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's what I'd say, but it's tough for everyone. And I'm not here to, I'm not here to pass judgment. You know, people have it a lot worse than me. Um, I'm lucky enough to, um, to still have the family members that I have. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of love around me, man. So, um, yeah. So for those of you who are struggling and if you've just said shut up to me, then if you want to reach out and if you need any help with anything, if you want any advice, listen, my Insta handle is Luke the Gent. Shoot me a DM and um, um, I'd be happy to give you any advice I can if you're looking for it. But uh, yeah, that's what I'd say, if I'm honest. And I know that positive was something that you carried all weekend in Milan as well. And of course, when we were speaking to you, it was positive. We are on fighting talk. We couldn't go without talking about your MMA. I mean, so let's do it. Strange year for you. I originally scheduled to fight Alex O'Toole on the May London card, I believe. That yes, then, sir. of course, fell off in. Instead, it was behind closed door in Milan. <laughs> uh, what was that like as an experience overall? Because I know we spoke immediately after the fight, but now you've had a bit of time to sit back, reflect on it. What was that experience yeah. like to make a Bellator debut? Well, listen, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't stop smiling ear to ear. So I think everyone around me knew how it was, but I was so, I was on cloud nine and it felt like, and again, with the corniness, it felt like a dream. I was, I don't think uh, a lot of people understand when, when I was an amateur, um, you know, I started, I started fairly late. And when I had my first amateur fight and I was in some, and this is no shade, but I was in some strip club with sticky floors in the change room. And, you know, I didn't have a rap man and I flipping, I didn't have gloves. So I had to borrow someone's and I forgot my cup and I was stressing about my gum shield. And, it, you know, going through such a grassroots level to then, you know, uh, what was it? It was four years later, I think four years later, um, I was flying with my, with my pops to Italy and to go, to go fight on a show that would be shown in front of millions of people. It was, it was phenomenal. It I, I can't, I can't put into words how amazing that whole week, that whole fight camp, the the lead up, the experience, everything was was incredible. Um, and going into the fight, I absolutely love to fight. So it's fun for me. It's um, it's it's a joyous occasion. I don't know how to put it in any other words. Uh, yeah, I was genuinely. I was genuinely on cloud nine. Um, and after such a long layoff, you know, my last fight was that tournament back with EFN in October. After such a long layoff, I was raring to go from November last year. And then I thought I was going to be pushed so hard. And I think Bellator wanted to, but with Corona, it just wasn't possible. So, you know, I, I sat there feeling like I was being shelved and I wasn't because everyone else was. But at the same time, you know, that doesn't, just because it's Corona, it doesn't comfort me in any way. So I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder. Oh, like, let's just get it going. And then, yeah, Milan happened. And oh, ever since, man, it's um, now the ball's rolling. And I know for a fact that Be Bellator are going to really try and push me into this light heavyweight division that, you know, is spicing up over the couple of weeks with the, with the new signings of Rumble, the new signings of Corey Anderson. Um, you know, the, 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 division is, the division's getting hot. And I'll be honest, I'm seeing these guys... I'm seeing these guys like Hamza Shemayev and um, uh, and Mr. Holland, Mr. Big Mouth on on the UFC. I see these guys and they're they're taking full advantage of every opportunity they can. They're, they're you know they're taking fights week after week. You know Kevin Holland's just had five fights this year and wants the sixth next week. So I'm in the same boat. Like I would fight I would fight this Saturday if if Bellator said yo we've had a dropout come come get it at heavyweight because I'm a little fluffy right now i'd say cool let's let's do it so i'm i'm 24 years old i feel like i'm personally in my prime i'm learning each and every week i get better by one percent that's my goal and it has been for the past six years i'm ready to go whenever and i would love next year if they could give me four to six fights next year that would be my goal uh, a lot of people are telling me it's unrealistic and look for two or three i don't want that i'm 24 years old man if if bellator have signed me and bellator have, have put the push in me that they have already if they're doing this, then they want me to scrap. If if they don't want to use me to my full advantage, then cut me. 
You know, I, I want to be used to my full advantage. I want to show the world my potential. I want every scrap. I want the light heavyweight belt. Um, I'm on. I'm fully tunnel visioned on a mission now. So um, I think Bellator want me. I think Bellator have shown that that, um, that their lightweight their light heavyweight division is no joke. So I'm looking forward to competing in it, and I cannot wait to to get that belt. It's it's just each each movement is another checkpoint so yeah man i'm excited i'm i'm raring to go um i ain't crying this time but you are getting me flipping emotional so yeah. it's uh yeah it's dope man i just want to get it i want to get after it and i want um i want to scrap as soon as possible you talk about kevin holland of course got five fighters yeah you had three in one night of course when you first got that better a contract <laughs> How important yes. is it? How important is it in a sport like mixed martial arts, where look, your career lifespan, if you like, isn't you know going to be like 30, 40 years? How important no. is it to take these opportunities and really run with them when they are presented to you? It's everything, man. It, I feel like I feel like if you're um, on one hand, it's the hurry up and wait game, right? On one hand, it's like all you bet. I, I, I got from my manager, who I love, David out there um, from Paradigm. And he said, listen, just stay ready. And I, I love I love when people say that because it's very hard to just stay ready. To stay mentally, for me, um, I need to be in absolute samurai mode when I, when I go to fight. So for me to have that, is it takes a lot of energy and a lot of time for me. So it's that hurry up and wait game on one hand. And then all of a sudden it's, Right, you're going next week. You've got to drop out. Uh, it's that heavyweight or it's that catch weight or whatever. So it's, um, yeah, it's it's a weird one. And my shelf life, I know, is my prime is going to be from 25 to 35. You know, realistically, for enough for an athletic price, that's 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 my prime. So I need to get going now. You know, now is a time where I'm like, all right, cool. One year, I should be. I should, if I haven't got the belt already, I should be scrapping for that belt, ready to go. So that's my goal. My goal is to have complete world domination. Um, and I know I've only got a small time to do it in. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating when it's not in your control. But I do feel like Bellator uh, are wanting to push me. And I feel like I have a lot to offer the division. So, yeah, man, it's um, frustrating on one hand. But then, you know what? I get to fight in a cage in my underwear in front of thousands of people and get paid good money for it. So I flipping love my life, man. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I can't complain at all. I know we spoke about it post-fight as well, but for you, the light heavyweight division, although there are some new signings, maybe isn't the deepest division in the mm. promotion. Do you then see that leading to you maybe having to take these American fights a little bit sooner than other athletes who have just had the one fight for the promotion will be? Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, I'm not... Um, I don't know what I can and can't say. Um, so I'm not trying to leak anything. Uh, but I I feel like Bellator may or may not want to get me out in the States pretty soon. Um, and I would love to. Listen, Milan was dope. Um, like I said before, I mean, I'm a shy guy. So I didn't really say anything. But they had the, the, the most beautiful medic team I've ever seen in my life. Um, and that was Milan. So if you want to send me out to, I don't know where, um, no, I'm playing, but that isn't the reason why I want to go to the States. No, I'd love to go out to America. You know, I've been out there before for training. Um, I love I love the States in general. Um, it's a beautiful place. Whether they send me to Ohio, whether they send me to Cali, I don't really care. Um, and to be honest, they could send me to Hemel Hempstead to go fight in the swimming pool. Like, again, right now, it doesn't matter. But I know the States is where the big shows are. The States is where they're, they're pushing the, the, the most premium fights. So I'm ready to go. Uh, I've, my visa is signed. I'm good to go. Get me on a plane. Or leave me in Europe. Just get me fights. That's all I really want. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure these big fights are going to be coming, knocking at no time at all. There was so much hype surrounding you following such an emphatic win. And of course, you got to mention off Ariel Hawani on his show. What's that been like for you <laughs> to be getting like these? You're only, what, four fights in your career and you're already being touted and scouted by the likes of Ariel. What's that like for you to have that hype around you? Mm. Uh, uh, did you know what it was? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie and act like I wasn't gassed. I was fully gassed. It was, um, you know, I've I've grown up. I've grown up with MMA being my, uh, you know, my sport of favor. And there's no bigger. There's no bigger name. It, it doesn't get any bigger than Errol Hawani. So when he when he shot me out on the gram, it was incredible. And then I checked my DM requests, 
And I was like, right, what are you doing in it, Mr. Hawani? Let me put you in the let me put you in the main folder. Um, and yeah, we went back and forth a little bit. And uh and I think what was so cool about him shouting me out is there's so many incredible fighters out there. There's so many guys out there who um, you know, you've you've got the likes of a flipping Joaquin Buckley, who had one of the most phenomenal knockouts of all time. You have those those type of highlights and those type of reels to share and and to um, and to spread around. And he chose he chose mine not because of not because of how I finished Alex O'Toole. You know, I'm not taking anything away from my performance, but um, it was it was a domination. But it was it, it, that's not the reason he shared it. He shared it because he he saw my genuine passion and and um pride to represent Bellator and how happy I was just to be there um and you know he's actually spoke about me after that about the stuff I was doing for for the local hospital and um and the he he seems to he he's he seemed to take a liking to to me as a human and, and what I was trying to do on a bigger on a bigger page than just the fight. So that was incredible, man. And getting to go back and forth with him for a little bit. He's a busy man. So I appreciated his time. Um, but yeah, so it's dope. And and look, it feels, it feels amazing. And, um, and I can see the push only getting bigger and bigger. Like I said, my plan is, my plan is to dominate everyone in the division. Um, th there's been some dope signings. Corey Anderson, who's a phenomenal grappler. I'd love to test it against him. Rumble Johnson. I keep seeing all these memes about a light heavyweight division all of a sudden getting scared because Johnson's in. I've seen DC handle his business and I love DC. I love his grappling. I see, uh, I see that as a very fun fight. Me and my coach have already spoke about that. I know that's, I know that might be a ways down the line. You know, I'm not saying Bellator are going to give me that right away, but if Bellator said to me, yo, Rumble Johnson wants to go next week, get me on a plane. Again, let's do it at a catch weight. I know he's a big boy too, but um, yeah, I'm I'm literally, I'm ready for any fight. It's a, for me, it's a lose. It's a win-win, not lose-lose. It's a win-win. It's give me whoever and let me just get my way to the belt. Um yeah, man. So, nah, like, listen, since that fight, life is good. I'm just waiting for the next scrap. Finally, Luke, if we I mean, we don't know what's going to happen next year. I think nobody had the year planned out like this the way it is. No. But if things are back to normal and you can be active, where do you see your MMA career end of 2021? Ending with 2021. Ideally, 2021 in December, let's say, at the end of the year, I'm fighting for the belt. I have a, I have a ridiculously busy year. Bellator give me four to six fights. And on that last fight, I fight for the belt. I get the belt. That's, that's in an ideal world. That's how it goes. I plow through everyone. I destroy everyone. I dominate everyone. And I become the face of the light heavyweight division. That is, that is how I see 2021 going. Perfect. Luke, all the best with the cycle. Like I say, uh, the link will be in the top row of the description. So if you do want to go and donate, like you said, any little amount, big amount, whatever you Anything. Have, it would be really appreciated. And Luke, thank you very much Anything. for your time. My man, I appreciate your time so much, brother. Have a lovely Christmas as well. You too, you and your family. Thank you. All right, bro. Bye-bye.